It's Andre or Andre? Andre? <laughs> it's the first time we've ever interviewed a goalkeeper on the overlap, and we are privileged that Andre and Arne is going to be that first goalkeeper. The toughest position in football, Manchester United number one. Fact. He's done a lot of work since 2016 to help the Andre and Arne Foundation, which has delivered medical care to thousands. I'm interested in goalkeeping. The way it's changed, the expectations on a modern goalkeeper to be a great passer of the ball, play in tight spaces, be out and at the edge of your box and anticipate every single ball over the top, but with all the traditional demands of a goalkeeper, which is to save shots and come for crosses. Hello, how are you? Hello. Oh, you're smarter than me. I thought you'd be casual. Are you okay? I'm good, good to I'm see good. you, yeah. You enjoy Manchester? Oh, yes. Now I'm getting used to, to Winchester. <laughs> <laughs> you speak Spanish, French, Italian, Italian and English. Mm. Wow. And the Cameroonian, they like a dialect. Iwondo. Iwondo, yeah. We're the laziest nation in the world when it comes to languages. In football terms, it's a bit embarrassing. All the different languages that you speak, it's unbelievable, really. I had the same last season with Inter. You step in the dressing room, everyone is speaking Italian. What about in Holland? Before me, it was more difficult because you had to speak Dutch. But when I arrived, I make my lesson to learn English. Right, and okay. set off. The team talks there. were in English? Yeah. Edwin was the, the general manager yeah. when you were there. Great guy, eh? Yeah, very good guy. He advised me a lot when I was there. Yeah. Really Do you still good. speak to him now? Yeah, 100%. Andre Nahn is trying to establish himself at United in his first season. and you know, It's been a tough season for the club, for the team. He's a massive personality and character, and you can see that in his play. He's emotional at times. You can see he gets sort of, you know, he's into the game, and uh, we'll see. You guys have done amazing things for this club. Is it difficult when ex-players criticise the team? When things are going wrong, don't go for the youngest one. I'm here to take bullets. Did you turn down or reject a contract in the end at Barcelona? When I was talking with them, they were like, Andre, you have a chance. What they were telling me is not what I found out in the end. But is it concentration? Is it something you speak concentration? about? Concentration? Yeah. In our level, we don't have to speak about concentration. At the moment, we have other teams who are doing better than us. We have to, to be honest, we have to recognise that. It will not always rain, eh? Sun will come and shine. Every position has changed in the last 15, 20 years. I don't think any position has changed more than goalkeeper. I agree. Your know, fullback's changed. You know, fullback's going to midfield or some type of things like that. But the goalkeeping position has just transformed. I sometimes see goalkeeper. I see you do it sometimes, where you pass the ball to your centre back, or the centre back passes it to you on your six-yard line. Just talk us through the thinking behind this, because I, I, I play traditional football going back. We played out from the back, but only you know if we if someone pressed on, we just kicked it long. Yeah. Tell me, talk to me about why you do. What what is behind the thinking of this? No, it's a, it's the wolf playing because we. As uh, Manchester, Manchester United, we are we are a big club. We cannot run behind the ball. We cannot hide today, and um, we want to be more dominant. We, we want to have more position. And um, playing back to me, we try to create space yeah. on the back. So it depends, but I have to be clever and I have to be fast thinking and see what the opponent gonna do. Because sometimes you have the centre back of the opponent who jump to your midfield or to yeah. your or to your striker. Yeah. If he doesn't jump, that means we have plus one. But I have to recognize that. And I have to find the free man. Sometimes that is the problem because you have the ball, but you don't see which one is free. Yeah. And it's what we try to do sometimes. It depends also how do they press, if they press with 10, if they press with the winger, it depends because some teams, how we, we make meetings about them is the same, they do meetings about us. So they know you are very good with the feet or you are a very intelligent player, or you, you, have, you, are, you have good skills, or you are fast. So they, they prepare also how to, to block you, especially in this league. It's a massive pressure. Because I remember, he, just, if, if I received the ball in my own box, mm -hmm. and everything was in front of me, I, could, I couldn't see. It was like, you, know, you have so many players in front of you. Front the of pressure you. to find that pass into midfield, or chipping it over, it, it, do you feel, I can't see anything here. Sometimes you're the, the pressure of you to find someone is big. Every time you're on the ball. Well, it's every goalkeeper, not just you, actually. Well, it's, uh, the pressure is big, but 
with your teammates, you know, when we know each other, when you you play along with with your teammates, it becomes easy because they always give you option. And I'm happy to have the teammates I have now because they, Bruno is always available, Mino is always is always available, Ari is there. So my teammates they are making they are making it easy for me. The problem is when you don't have the option, you have to kick long, and sometimes the strike is already too close. That's why you will see sometimes you will see. Some goalkeeper made mistakes because we wait too long and we find the, yeah. the free man, but the guy is coming. Yeah. He will not wait for you. And it's, it's difficult. It's, um, it's a difficult situation sometimes. What is the difference between the Dutch league, the Italian league and the English league that you found? I think it's even... Uh, the, the difference is, is huge. You know, Premier League is by far the best. Dutch league is good, especially when you are young. Yeah. You you can show yourself. Italian league is very tactic. Yeah. Tactic league, but in terms of um, intensity here, you you have. I don't. I think sometimes even in Champions League, the Premier League is even higher than the Champions League in terms of intensity. Yeah. But this for me is a top league. It's fantastic league. It's the best league to play. And what's the intensity different for you as a goalkeeper in this league? More, more crosses, more long balls. What? Yeah, but I love it. I love the crosses. Yeah. And uh, but here, you, the goalkeeper have no protection. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> they don't yeah, protect. Yeah. So you. Uh, sometimes I'm fighting with the guy already before the crosses. I'm start. I start to hit him like, hey, don't come closer. But in the end, it's nice because. <laughs> <laughs> when they come to you, my friend, you, are, yeah. you must be ready. Is that is that the big difference? You think the, physical, me, yeah, the physicality? The, the physicality, yeah, the physicality. It's more physical than the Italian league. Yeah, the Italian, the Italian league is like uh, oh, it's, it's chess. Yeah, it's tactic, <laughs> but it's nice, it's beautiful to watch, you know. But here is it's up and down, up and down. It's like tennis game. Boom, yeah. boom, boom, boom. It's, also, depending against who you play, because you have some teams who oh, this tennis game is brilliant for them. You play Liverpool, it's fantastic for yeah. them. But you play City, it's not good for them because for yeah. them, they like to have more control, yeah. position. So it depends against who you play. You guys have done amazing things for this club. Is it difficult when ex-players criticise the team? When things are going wrong, don't go for the youngest one. I'm here to take bullets. You played in the Champions League final for Inter Milan. You, you had an amazing season. Was it easy to come to Manchester? Was it was it obvious you just had to come? You wanted to experience it, or was it a difficult decision? No, it was not. You cannot say no to Manchester United. Yeah. It's one of the biggest clubs in, in the world. I was excited to come. Yeah, you were excited to come to Manchester and just be part of it. And was Eric Ten Hag a big feature? Were big feature in that because obviously you played for him before. Yes, but uh, also as a as a club, no, it's. It's difficult to say no to Manchester United, and uh, for me, I think it's the, it's the biggest club in this country, one of the biggest clubs in the world, and playing Premier League is the best stage yeah. to show yourself. So I've said this for 20 years, Manchester United goalkeeper is the most pressurised position in the world. I think in English football, definitely, it's the most pressurised position. Have you felt that? Did you feel that in the first few months? The, yes. the level of scrutiny, the level of... Sort of intensity goes up. Well, yeah, mm, the pressure. I'm used to the pressure. Yeah. You know, being Cameroonian yeah. first is a big pressure. Yeah. Playing for my national team, it's a huge play <laughs> pressure. Playing for Barcelona, it's big pressure, especially when you're in the first yeah. team. Inter is pressure. Here is even more. I would not say I feel the pressure because I'm used to this. Yeah. You know, I'm 28 years old. Yeah. But uh, it was different. You know, it was, um, everything was different. I had to adapt. It took me six months not to play good, to feel good. And I also have um, opportunity to speak with some players, my teammates, of course. And they told me, Andre, listen, he took you six months. But for some, it's yeah. even a year. And for others, they don't even wake up. Yeah, I agree. Who helped you through it? Obviously, all, other than yourself, who, would, who gave you the Everyone. biggest support? Everyone. Any any examples <clears throat> you can give where you listen? You have. I will tell you a small example. I have Ari. Sometimes you enter the dressing room, and 
I'm talking with my guy, big guy. <laughs> and uh, when you see what if he passed through, yeah. why would you, would you, you would not pass through this? Yeah. Harry face. It's terrible. Tough, right? Yeah. It's a big man. He show a lot of character. Now he's back. He's one of the best we have. Yeah. So it's an example, you know. Yeah. We, it's important to look um, this kind of example. It's important to take him as a reference because he passed through difficult situation. Now he's back and we move forward. I'm happy. I'm happy because my teammate people, as I told you before, we have good people around you, especially yeah. this club. They helped me so much. And that's yeah. why I'm still smiling yeah. because the first six months it was difficult. But in the same time, it was a good moment to learn. You know, you, you become more strong because after playing a final of the Champions League and final of the Europa League, you think you are yeah. the best. You've seen everything. And life shows you another opportunity to learn, to learn. Like, my friend, you are never too big. Yeah. And especially football. Football is uh, it's about moment. Yeah. You can have a good season. Next year you have a bad season. But the year after, amazing again. Yeah. So the up and down and being here, you have to deal with a lot of a lot of things, especially being goalkeeper. Not only because you are coming from Inter, but also because um, great goalkeeper have passed. You're replacing David De Gea. David, not only David. You have also before David. We spoke about Edwin. Edwin. We spoke about Peter Schumacher. They have done a lot of good things for this club. Yeah. Also, you guys. You guys have done amazing things for this club. And when you wear this jersey, it's heavier. But depend how you say this. For me. It's extra motivation because you guys being fantastic. You guys want everything, and we have to try to do similar like you, even if it's not easy at the moment. Is it difficult when ex-players criticise the team? Is it, is it, does it does it actually does it hurt more, or does it feel like it makes it more difficult? To be honest, for me, I don't pay attention about it. No, you know, that's and the right I, thing to do. Am I always the one? <laughs> I'm always the one who said, listen, I came in this team to take bullets because we are in a reconstruction. Yeah. At the moment, we are not um, the best. We have other teams who are doing better than us. We have to, to be honest, we have to recognize that. But uh, if things and when things are going wrong, don't go for the youngest one. I'm here to take it. Bruno is there. Cassie is there. Ari is there. We are used to it. But uh, when you see this for people, who won everything, who was sitting where I'm sitting mm. today. Sometimes it's bizarre, like, we are in the same boat. Yeah. You know, we just try to follow your, yeah. your thing, you know, what you did. For me, I don't mind, but you, maybe for other people, they're going to get affected. But for me, to be honest, it's, it's just part of the game. You have had to face 600 shots on your goal. 20 shots every game come at you. You've got the thing, the best save ratio in the league. I mean, it's cra the amount of shots you've had to face is crazy. How, how, how do we explain that? that? That's the one thing that, you know, I was a defender and sometimes you can see shots, of course you do, you can see goals, we make mistakes. Mm -hmm. But that amount of shots on your goal is incredible. Yes, but it's a price to pay. And I always say, um, everything is um, temporarily. Last season, they didn't face that. And I'm sure 100% next season we will not face this you amount think it's, of shots. You think it's just this season? But why, yes. is it why is it happened? Do you, because do you it's know? football. Because it's football. Sometimes I think it's just um, it's just moment, and we face we face a lot of injury crisis. A lot of we lost we lost a lot, a lot of important player. But of course, it's not an excuse. It's just um, a bad season for all of us, and we have to stay positive as we are doing at the moment. And I know everything will be all right if it's not. This season, of course, this season is difficult. It will be next one. How challenging has it been for you having, I think you've had 13 different centre-back partnerships in front of you. How difficult has that been for you not to have that consistency in front of you? Obviously, everyone talks about goalkeeper and centre-backs as being a critical part yeah, but of I team. Don't think, I don't think it's only for me. I think it's for the whole club. You the know? whole team, yeah. The whole team, for the, for the manager, for the, for the staff, or the whole staff, for the medical part, not facing what we are facing is... It's not nice for all of us, you know, but we are Manchester United. We don't have this, we cannot use this as an excuse. So we have to deal with the, with the situation. It's not only about me. 
Harry is playing with uh, Kase. Yeah, so, yeah. You don't know if he, if he's if he like it or not. Kase is playing center, but you know these are the things. But we have to be pragmatic, yeah. and we have to look what is the best for the team. If I have to play striker, I will play striker. <laughs> and Kasi is doing fantastic, fantastic job for us. He's playing there because the team need him there. Yeah. Diogo sometimes is playing left back because the team need him. Yeah. And we have uh, we can go point by point. Sometimes Bruno play center back because yeah. I remember against Liverpool, Liverpool Bruno, yeah. Bruno was center back <laughs> because the team need him there. So yeah. we have to look what is the best for the team because for me, in the end of the day, we are United players and when you are here, that means you have um, a good level. I was about to turn 18 and Barcelona bring in Ter Stegen. He was 22. And then I start to think like, I will not have the opportunity to play. Andre, you've done a lot of work since 2016. You set up the Andre Nana Foundation, which has delivered medical care to thousands of people. Just talk to us a little bit about the work that you do. Well, I started my foundation years ago. Why? Because I came from a foundation as well, you know, and um, people helped me a lot to become who I am today. So I believe, uh, I think for me, it's also it's time to give something back. And I started with my foundation with um, like six, seven years ago, helping blind people because I know the reality on, in my country. It's difficult for a lot of people. And uh, imagine no, if it's already difficult for you having your parents. And when you, are, you don't have them and you are blind, it's even harder. Yeah. So from there on, I started to do some things. Helping them, try to give them, give them smile, try to to help them how I can. Not saying I'm going to change the life of everyone, no. But I'm trying to do what I can. Of course, I also have a lot of people who are helping me. Yeah. So together we try to do something nice. And we start with young, with children, or young children. But now we are doing for adults. We're doing a lot of things for a lot of people. You said you grew up in a foundation. What does that mean, just to people, obviously, in the UK? What would that mean in, in Cameroon, where you grew up? Well, because I, um, I play for a foundation, yeah. you know, when I was in Cameroon. Okay. So that's why I decided also to, to have a foundation to help people, because I have some people who helped me yeah. back in the days. So for me, it's the, it's the way to pay back to those people who helped me years ago. And now you're doing some work in Manchester. You've been to the Royal Children's, uh, Manchester Children's Hospital um, today. Just talk about what you're doing in Manchester. It's almost the same thing. Try to um, make them happy because um, everyone has his own fight. You know, we are fighting on the pitch. They are fighting off. Yeah. And for some of them, they will have uh, surgeries. But this is more important than what we are doing because they are fighting for their life. And uh, it's my way to give them support, to tell them, we are with you guys, you know, we will not be there in the operation, but we feel you, you know, you guys, we be strong. It's a big fight and I'm sure you, you guys are going to win it. You, when you play football, you can see that you play with a big heart. You've obviously off the pitch got a big heart as well. Is it, is, is it the most important thing to you that you're a good person off the pitch? Is that sort of the foundation of your life and your values and your principles? Yes, I think it's, uh, it's very important. Because, uh, of course, football is a game for emotion, but it's 90 minutes. Yeah. After that, you have uh, your own life, you have a private life, you have your friendship, you have people around you who help you, you have people who need you. So it's important to, to manage that because, of course, football is our job. But uh, beside that, you also have an uh, important thing to do. What was growing up in Cameroon like? Talk to us about your parents and your family and sort of the upbringing that you had. It's different, you know. <laughs> Talking about my country, he's always giving me a smile because uh, it's nice. For me, it's the best country in the world. And uh, I grew up differently than European children because it's another mentality, mentality it's another culture. But it's nice, you know. And also, I had uh, a pleasure to travel a lot, to open my mind, to see how is it in Spain, to see how is it in uh, Holland, to see how is it in Italy, to see how it's here. So when, uh, when you have uh, this opportunity, you will find out the most important thing is the relationship because uh, we, are, we pay too much attention for things who are not important. No? That's why um, 
today I went to the hospital because this uh, life is in football, it's about moment. Everything is temporary. You have good and bad moment and uh, it's just great. Cameroon, we grow up like, uh, it's difficult to, to explain myself in English because <laughs> I have so many memories and I hope we'll have time to share. And what's going to Barcelona like? I mean, that must have been like, wow, what, a, what an experience, what a change in your life, what, a, what courage to actually just get up and go and leave. It was one of the most important decisions I made. But I made that decision without thinking. Because Instinct. But I was not the one who decided. I, re I remember that the club with who I was playing, they already had the agreement for me in Barcelona. But I, will, I was the only one who didn't know. So they sold you almost, or they let you go without knowing? Not without knowing. <laughs> <laughs> let me explain. <laughs> because it's a, it's, a fun, it's a funny story because I remember I was in, in the Wala and I received a call from my mom who was supposed to travel uh, maybe in two days. And my mom, she's telling me, Andre, uh, yes, you travel in two days, but make sure you take all your stuff. I'm like, why am I going to take all my stuff? No, because uh, you never know, just take all your stuff. Why? She, 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 didn't, she don't want to tell me. Because if she tell me I'm going to play for Barcelona, I will tell all my friends <laughs> in the same moment. So she didn't want that. You know, she want me to be quiet because for someone who's coming from Cameroon and you have the opportunity to play for Barcelona, it's something huge. And she did right because if she told me that time, I would say to the whole country, I'm going to Barcelona because you see it's something big, I cannot hide that, that information. And then I received a call, make sure you go visit with everything. And when I arrive in Barcelona, then I see a van over there. They bring me direct to Barcelona Academy. I was like, <laughs> and then I arrived there. I have to do the try, trial, and I make the trial. It went good. Then I stay six, five, five or six years in Barcelona. Talk to us about that five or six years in Barcelona and what you learned and how you grew up and how it was moving away from your parents and obviously all that stability that you had. It was great. Today it was really good, but at the moment, and um, and that time it was difficult because you were moving to another country. You don't speak the language. You don't. You don't have experience about that country, you don't know anything. Of course, you have some teammates who speak French, but it's not the same. But we had a great time there, you know. We were living in La Masia. It was a very good place to be. You, 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 were, you were training the best pitch. Great club, fantastic people, and you were learning every day. For me, it was a, it was a great time. I had a great, great, great time in, uh, in Barcelona. And uh, yeah, I have a lot of teammates who are playing high level as well. When I think back, what we did there, it was, it was just amazing. And I had, uh, I'm very grateful for what we have done. In the, I read that you, did you turn down or reject a contract in the end at Barcelona and you left? That takes a lot, eh? I mean, that's a great club. It's one of the best clubs in the world. You've been there for a few years. Why did you, why, why, what made you turn well, it down? Well, because in the end of the day for me, that time, it was important to play somewhere. And um, of course, I was training with the second team, sometimes with the first team. And um, I remember the sport director was um, Subisareta yeah. that time. And we were having a negotiation to renew my contract. And what they were telling me, is not what I found out in the end. Because when, you, when I was talking with them, they were like, Andre, we count on you. We make sure, we'll make sure you, if you continue working how you're working, you have a chance. <laughs> and to be honest, sometimes you have to accept the reality and you have to recognize other people are also good as well. And uh, I was 17, I was about to turn 18, and Barcelona, bring in Ter Stegen, he was 22. After three weeks or four weeks, they bring Bravo. So in the same period. And then I start to think like, it's not enough pace for me, you, I will not have the opportunity to play. So I was looking for option. I had Arsenal, I had Chelsea, I had other clubs. You went to speak to Arsenal and Chelsea at the time? Yes. We did my agent speak with spoke with them that time. But in the end I decided to go to Ajax because for me it was important to 
to be in the first team somewhere. Yeah. And then from there on, we will see what is going to happen. Yeah. And when I had the opportunity to join Ajax, I was so happy. The principles of, of Barcelona and Ajax, there's a lot of crossover in terms of the styles of play. I always think the way in which the club's history is a very clear philosophy. Was that an influence on your decision that you'd grown up in the Barcelona Academy? Huge influence in Barcelona of obviously Johan Cruyff. You think about obviously the influence on, on and I, to be did, honest, did that come into your thinking or not? No, that time no. No? No, because I was just looking for a better option for me. And um, uh, it was important for me to look for my career and I was looking also for a league where I can start earlier. That moment it was the one of the club, one of the biggest clubs who can give you easy the opportunity to show yeah. yourself. And uh, time gives me a right. Do you think, obviously, you're great with your feet. Do you think that was that must have been helped enormously by growing up in the Barcelona Academy and then obviously going to a club like Ajax? Or were you, already, the, were you already like that? No, know, it's what? not about the feet because in the, end, in the end of the we are goalkeepers, you know, we adapt about the system. You know, last season, we were not playing from the back. With Inter, you mean? Oh. With Inter, we were yeah. not playing that much. The thing is, it's the system and the modern goalkeeper adapt with the system. Like I would tell, I would take an example with the player we have. We cannot go long all the time. We have to keep the ball. So I try to look, and we try to look together as a team. What is the best for us to perform? So I adapt myself with the system, with the tactic. Was it concentration? Is it something you speak concentration? about? Concentration. Yeah. In our level. We don't have to speak about concentration. It will not always rain. Eh? Sun will come and shine. Hi everyone, I hope you're enjoying this episode. This is just a quick thank you to Skybet, our partners, for making this show happen. It's something I've wanted to do for a long, long time. Please subscribe. There's loads more episodes coming up and I hope you're enjoying it. I want to ask you about the manager, Eric Ten Hag, because you had a, obviously you played with them at Ajax and you played some of the most wonderful football. What are the main differences and challenges you think that he faces here compared to at Ajax when the football was amazing and this season it's been challenging at United? How is he? How is he changed from sort of being at one club to another? What's the difference you see in him? I don't see any difference. I think it's the same guy. The same coaching, same sessions? Same... Listen, we are the same guys. We are the same players. We are this. We have this. He's the same manager I, I knew when I was in, in Ajax. He will not change in in one or two years. I'm not here to back him huh, because he's big enough to, yeah. you know. He's, but you've uh, worked with him before, so it's yes. Yeah. But last season he was fantastic for him. Here, yeah. I think. So it's just bad season. So for me, because last season I was the best. Yeah. So this season we have a different goalkeeper. Yeah. No, he's the same guy. Yeah. He's just facing a difficult situation and we are big enough to to accept the reality because if we, if we want to if we want to make things right we have to accept the reality and we have to inf we have to go front foot yeah so i think it's the same manager he, he's just facing different and difficult situation and uh, hopefully things then things become good for him how excited are you about the future at manchester united about what you can achieve, because what you saw against Liverpool in the game, that's probably the best atmosphere when you win. You've seen what Manchester United, what Old Trafford can be. How excited about are you about delivering that on a consistent basis? When I look how we play against top teams, that means we can, we could be fighting for the, for the, for the Premier League. But like I said, I'm very excited for the future because we have a lot of good young players who are coming. We have a, a lot of good experienced players, so we just have to find a good mix and I think next year it will be, it will be very good. How do you explain that you play well? I say, let's Coventry as an example, 3-0 and then all of a sudden, how do, you, how do you explain those moments in matches that sometimes occur? Because it's happened quite a bit. How do you, you're an experienced player, what do you think it is that just happens where something just, where did that come from? Because it's football, you know, no one can explain football. It's football. But you just think that happens. You think that you 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 think that there's no reason for it happening. It just everything happened for a reason. Otherwise, uh, but is it concentration? Is it something you speak concentration? about? Concentration. Yeah. I think in in our level, we don't have to speak about concentration because when you're already there, you perform on a high level. 
but we are just facing bad situation and we are just uh, facing a bad season. And sometimes you have own goal, you have uh, deflections. You, there are things you cannot control in foot in life. So um, we try to um, to adapt. We try to be pragmatic. But um, the most important things for me is not what already passed. Yeah, is what we're gonna do tomorrow because uh, against Coventry. We cannot change anything anymore. It's done. It's over. Now we have City in front. How do you stop it happening again? What, what do you do to Keep try and doing stop it? What we are doing, working hard, believing on ourselves, staying together, is what we have been doing these years. And uh, I know the hard work will pay. Yeah. I don't know if it's tomorrow, but I know it will pay. If not tomorrow, it will be after tomorrow. Is the training every day intense? And you, you watch the training, obviously you played at Inter Milan at high level at Ajax. Is the training at United this season of the level of intensity that you've seen before at previous clubs? The training are good. I don't think uh, we, we, we have to talk about it because uh, the training are good. We're enjoying the trainings and it's, uh, in the end it's our job. So when we're enjoying it, we play our games, small games there. We, we have fun and we battle each other. How is Steve McLaren? Does he do any of the training now, or is it mainly Eric that does the training? No, they are doing they all do together. together. Yeah, they are doing together. We have a big squad. We have, uh, we, have we actually have a very, we have nice people. We are, with yeah. who we are working with. Huh? Not only Steve, we have Fletch as well. Yeah, Maybe you might know him. We have good people. We have Benny McCarthy who are doing fantastic job for, yeah. for us, and they are working all together. To be yeah. honest, and for us, we are just. Um, I'm proud to be yeah. to, to work with them. I coached at Valencia for four months. I got sacked. And the goalkeeping in Valencia was so different. So in England, the goalkeepers used to come out early, do yeah. the goalkeeping work, and then they go, what happens now? What's your training every day? Do you, do you, do you train with the players all the way through the possession? No, it depends. Depend. Sometimes we, we come out earlier, sometimes not depending. Yeah. Sometimes you have three games in yeah. the week. It's difficult to... Yeah. To push, no. You have to manage yourself because in the end of the day we are all big players, so we know what we need. And but we have a great goalkeeper coaches, and they are doing fantastic, fantastic job. So sometimes we are with the team, we do the build ups. So depend, also depend against who you play. Yeah. The preparation against City is not the same preparation against Coventry. Yeah. You know, because against City you know you run more behind the ball. Against Coventry you prob probably have more the the position, but we are, we are fine. How important has the FA Cup become now, obviously, getting to the final, second year on the run, playing against Manchester City? I feel like the whole season is sort of built around this match now. Do you feel that in the dressing room? That Yeah, it's a, it's a very important game for us, especially when you're in the final, you to win, because we always remember the winner. So, who we'll go there to, to win. Like I said, we are Manchester United. That's another game we will play. Yeah. We cannot go thinking we will lose, otherwise it's better we don't step on the pitch. We will go there to win. We have important player, good player with a lot of personality, a lot of experience, Bruno, me, Ari, Victor, we have a lot of big players, so we'll go there to, to win. And final question, a message from Manchester United fans from you. Thank you for the support. First of all, it has been a very, very difficult season for us, for me as well, especially in the beginning. We have to stay together yeah. because um, it will not rain. It will not always rain. Eh? Sun yeah. will come, and uh, I hope we're all gonna enjoy yeah. the sun when it's gonna shine. No? Because uh, the situation will turn. If it's not today, it will be tomorrow. And uh, together is the only way to to turn the situation. I hope it shines on May the twenty fifth or the cup final day. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> well thank done, you, Andre. Great well, to I would see like you. to. To we'll oh. give you something, I prepare something for you. Oh, thank you. That's mm -hmm. the first time someone's ever given me a gift. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a show for you, mm -hmm. mate. With your, with your name. I don't think I'll be able to fit in that now. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant, great to see you. you. Well done, well done. Thank you, Andre. Thank you. Guys. Thank you.